I'm going to introduce you to a new method which allows you to determine the structures of period 1, period 2 elements in a simpler way. Of course, also applying to period 3 with a few exceptions. Okay, so look at the examples that we have. We've got NH3, PCO3, and O3. So in only two steps, we're going to determine the Lewis structure. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to know is know the group where the element is coming from. Okay, and then of course, know which atom is more electronegative. So that is selecting the central atom. So in the first example, we know that nitrogen can never be a central atom because it forms a maximum of a single bond. So in this case, nitrogen is going to be our central atom. Okay, so let's identify the valence electrons. Nitrogen has got five valence electrons coming from group five. Hydrogen has got a single valence electron. Okay, now the other thing that we'd have to do, the first step itself is basically just to get to determine how many electrons are required. So since we've determined the valence electrons, we know that octet is eight electrons. So nitrogen will need how many electrons? You need three. Now we know that for hydrogen, idium, lithium, beridium, basically, are only only need two electrons. They are okay with two electrons, okay? Because they are only dealing with the first shell. So two electrons are enough. So each nitrogen atom will need a single electron. How many are they? There are three. So each will need one. So it will be three. So how many electrons do we need? We need six. So the first step in determining the Lewis structure is first of all determining the number of required electrons. Step two is to divide by two to determine the number of bonds that are required. So therefore in this case, the number of bonds will be equal to what? Will be equal to three. So we can draw a structure. We know that our central atom is nitrogen. And of course, in this case, we know that hydrogen can form a maximum of a single bond. So we'll just join them. So why am I drawing them bent like that? You understand. Because I know that nitrogen has got five valence electrons. So in each bond, it has contributed a single electron. So it's remaining with two with a lone pair of electrons. So that is the structure. That is the Lewis structure of NH3. So we understand that there is a repulsion between the lone pair electrons and also the bonds. That's why they've bent downwards. We are now on the second structure. Equal to apply the same rule. What are we going to do? We are going to determine the number of required electrons as our first step. Okay. So I can clear the first part for the sake of space. Okay, so we can now look at PCO3. How basically do we get to determine its Lewis structure? So we know that phosphorus, if you check a periodic table, in which group is it coming from? So we understand that PCO3 or phosphorus is coming from group 5 as well, right? Okay, so how is it going to be? So it will be 5, chlorine is coming from group 7. So how many electrons do they need? We know that phosphorus needs how many electrons? It will need 3 to make it 8. Chlorine will need a single electron each to make it 8. So that is 3, since there are 3 chlorine atoms. So we also need 3. So in this case, we know as opposed to the second step is now, we've determined the number of required electrons. Our second step is determining the number of bonds by dividing by 2. So in this case, also it will be 3 what? 3 bonds. Now the fact that we've got 3 chlorine atoms, each will take a single bond. So we have phosphorus being our central atom. And then we have what? chlorine atoms. So equal to to be slanted like that. Why? Because we understand phosphorus has got five electrons in its outermost shell. So it has donated a single one in the three bonds. So it remains with two. So it's a pair remaining on top there. Okay. And then finally we can go to the other structure. Let's look at the number of valence electrons. Nitrogen is coming from group 1, group 5. Oxygen is coming from group 6. How many electrons do they need? So each of them, nitrogen will need how many electrons? Nitrogen will need 3 electrons. Each oxygen atom will need 2. So 2 times 3 will give us a 6. So a negative in case that there was, there was a gain of an electron. So that gain of electron will reduce the number of required electrons. So subtract 1. If it was a positive, it was going to show there was loss. So that was going to increase the need. Okay. 
So 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 minus 1 is what? 9 minus 1 is 8. So that is our first step. Step 2 is to divide by 2. So determine the number of bonds. How many bonds are they? So we're getting a total of 4 bonds in that structure. So we know our central atom is nitrogen. And then we've got 3 oxygen atoms. So how is it going to be? How is the sharing of the bonds going to be? So we've got 3 oxygen atoms. So one is supposed to get 2. And then the rest to get singles. Okay, like that. So are all the electrons used up on the, for the nitrogen atom? So we know that nitrogen is coming from group 5. So in each bond, there is use of what? Of a single electron. And then, of course, we'd have to distribute now the valence electrons to the other remaining atoms. So that was supposed to apply to everything else. Chlorine as well you can put the six electrons on our first structure. So even here, we'll put oxygen, we need six. There, oxygen, we need four. There, oxygen, we need six as well. So if you look at the number of used up electrons, we can calculate, we see how many electrons are remaining. So this oxygen atom basically did not contribute anything when it comes to the bond. So all the two electrons in this bond were coming from nitrogen. Because if you check, all its, all its six valence electrons are available. So it did not contribute to that bond formation. So all the electrons for nitrogen have been used up in the bond formation. Okay. So with these two steps, you're able to come up with fluid structures within a shortest period of time. Okay.